Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the first webinar where we will actually take you through the foundation and actually tell you more about the opportunity and what you are getting yourselves in for. My name is Si Lemfuking, and I am the Fellowship Recruitment and Selection Officer here at the Allen Gray Orbis Foundation. And really, my role is to help you guys, expose you guys to the opportunity and make sure that you actually come onto the program and become the next high impact responsible entrepreneurs that we are looking for. So just to kick off, I just want to uh, maybe just orientate you guys around the platform. I don't know if you guys know exactly how to use Crowdcast. So on the side, of Crowdcast. I don't know if that's my left or my right, I don't know, but you'll see there are comments there and I've even said hello to everybody there and I see one of my colleagues has also written, welcome to everybody. So please just interact with each other on there, say whatever it is that you want to say, just have fun on that side. At the bottom of your screen, you will see there is ask a question. So if you have a question that you would like myself, one of my colleagues to answer today, please go drop it and ask a question. Please note that we will not be answering questions which are in the chats. We will only answer questions which we'll find at the bottom here on ask a question. Next to ask a question, you see there is polls. So there are three polls that are currently up at the moment. So please just take some time to go to the poll section and answer for us. We need to know, or we would like to know, where you're joining us from today, what are you looking forward to about the session? And uh, yeah, so please go into the poll and let us know how you're feeling, where you're joining us from today. And whilst you guys do that, I just want to thank everybody who's in the background helping me today. Uh, not really behind me, but like in the background. And uh, firstly, a huge thank you to Yanni, who is part of our public affairs and communications team. And she is the one who's doing all the production today. So my job is really easy because I just get to stand in front of you and talk. And Yanni gets to do all the moving things around, change my slides, put up the polls, take away the polls. So she's the one responsible for that. Thank you so much, Yanni. Later on, we will be talking to one of our candidate fellows and her name is Sipo Gazi. She is a candidate fellow at the University of Free State and she will be just coming on to tell us about her fellowship experience, when she applied and how it was and actually how the process and the program has been treating her uh, so long. So just to get started, we're going to move on now so we can get started with our presentation. So most of you are on here today to find out more about this opportunity and what it's really all about. So this is who we are as the Ellen Gerobis Foundation. Firstly, our vision as an organization is an entrepreneurial, equitable South Africa, which is flourishing with meaningful employment. I mean, we see the unemployment rates in South Africa skyrocketing, poverty rates, shocking, inequality. All of these stats are really, really bad. And at the foundation, we believe that through entrepreneurship, we will be able to fight this triple evil. So that is why our vision is an entrepreneurial, equitable South Africa, flourishing with meaningful employment. Our mission is to foster a community of responsible entrepreneurs. So as you guys are applying now, and if you do get the opportunity to make it onto the program, that is the community that you'll be joining, a community of like-minded uh, people who are going to entrepreneurship, not for themselves, but knowing and understanding that you are really going into entrepreneurship for the common good. So at the Allen Gray Orbis Foundation, we believe that it just takes one person. And in our case, it took Mr. Gray to be this high impact entrepreneur. And you can do this and you can change the reality of a city, of your community, a country, uh, or even the, the whole continent just by creating meaningful employment. So that is what we are looking for. I always say that if you are crazy enough to dream it, the Allen Gerobis Foundation is here to help you on that entrepreneurial journey. So this is something that we truly believe at the Allen Gray Entrepreneurship um, Organization is that 
entrepreneurship is not something that you are born with, but it's actually something that can be taught. And I know that there is another poll now which you guys can go on and interact with. We would just like to find out more about what your take is on entrepreneurship. Do you think it's something that you are born with or do you really believe that it's something that can be taught? And here we believe that it's something that can be taught. And here we teach an entrepreneurial mindset. And the beauty about an entrepreneurial mindset, which all of us have, and all of us can be developed to think entrepreneurially, whether you are in marketing, in law, you are a politician, or whatever it is that you're doing, we should all be thinking in an entrepreneurial way questioning things, asking questions, uh, challenging, always suggesting that things can be done differently. So we believe that by developing that entrepreneurial mindset, we will one day have those high impact and responsible entrepreneurs that we talk about at the foundation. So when we talk about this high impact and responsible entrepreneur, most people will be like, but what is that? And for us, a high impact and responsible entrepreneur is somebody with passion, integrity, innovation, and people you know who are determined and are excellent and are at the forefront of changing the reality of South Africa, Southern Africa, people who really believe in a positive impact, people who know that through going um, into the root of entrepreneurship, they are really not doing it for themselves, but for the betterment of those people around them. And for us, those are high impact responsible entrepreneurs. So you might have been reading on our website and see that there are these five pillars that we talk about at the Allen Gray Overs Foundation. So I'm just briefly going to explain these pillars to you guys. So the first pillar that is very important to us at the Allen Gray Overs Foundation is spirit of significance. Again, this goes back to that high impact and responsible entrepreneurship. These are people going into entrepreneurship knowing that they're doing it for other people, for the betterment of other people. The second pillar is achievement excellence. And these are people who really set really high goals and really high standards for themselves. And they do whatever it takes to reach or even exceed those goals. The third one is intellectual imagination. Again, these are people who are always questioning, why this way? Why not that way? People who take other people's ideas, combine them, and together they know that something greater can come out of it. So people who are always just thinking about innovative ways to bring out new creations into this world. The fourth pillar that we're looking for is personal initiative. So these are people who are go-getters, self starters, people who really do not need to be told what needs to be done, but they actually just go out there and they do it. And the last thing is courageous commitment. So these are people who fall down seven times and get up eight. People with resilience, grit, and determination. These are people who do not give up. And I'm sure if you know a lot about entrepreneurship, you'll know that one, it's a very long journey and it's very lonely. And secondly, you will fail and fail and fail again. But what is important is uh, not about the failing, but how you get up, dust yourself off, and try again. How do you actually fail forwards? Okay. So we move on to the competencies. Okay. So when you are filling in that application form or you are sitting in an interview, if you've been shortlisted for that, or you come to selection camp, we have these 14 competencies which we have at the foundation. So about three years ago, we did a study on 1,500 entrepreneurs. So these are entrepreneurs who are still at startup phase and some are even at growth phase. And we found that out of all of these 1,500 people, these 14 traits were the most common out of all of them. So these are the 14 competencies which lead to entrepreneurial action. So when you are filling in that application form, you're answering those questions at the interview or you come to selection camp. This is truly what we are looking for. Okay, And the beauty about these uh, 14 competencies is that they are developable and they are measurable. 
So you don't have to worry and think, oh my goodness, uh, maybe my leadership skills are lacking a bit or my self-efficacy is really not that great, but maybe you are great at all the others. And the beauty about our program is that we can be able to develop you to actually then realize these and uh, actually lead to entrepreneurial action one day. Okay, next slide, please, Yanni. Thank you. So at the foundation, we take a very, very long-term approach to this whole entrepreneurial education and getting to that high impact and responsible entrepreneur. So we start off, whilst we're still building that entrepreneurial mindset, we have what is called the Alan Gray Entrepreneurship Challenge. And this is a game which is open to all students from grade eight all the way to matric. And this is our way of actually democratizing entrepreneurship education. Nowadays, you talk about entrepreneurship and people think you must be doing business studies or you must be wanting to go and study commerce one day, but all of those things are actually a myth. As I said, we all need to start thinking entrepreneurially. So that is what the Alan Gray Entrepreneurship Challenge is there to do. Our next part is the scholarship program. So here learners apply to us when they are still in grade six and we support them in high school. Again, just continuing to develop that entrepreneurial mindset. From there, we have the fellowship program, which is what you guys are all here for today. And this is our university program where we support you and continue cultivating that entrepreneurial mindset. And once you graduate from the fellowship program, you then move on to our association. So our association is an alumni program, but the beauty about the Allen Groves Foundation and the association is that once you graduate, you sit in the association for life. How amazing is that? So you can come back to us when you are 60 and say, now I'm ready to start a business or I've got this great business idea and there will be people and structures in the association to support you on that business journey. We also have E Squared, which is a potential funding partner, which funds our candidate fellows and our fellows in the program who have demonstrated uh, that uh, desire to go into entrepreneurship. And then at the end of all of this, we truly believe that we would have found that person who is going to be a high impact and responsible entrepreneur and will bring about the so much needed change that we see in South Africa today. So now I'm going to jump in to the fellowship program, which is a bit more exciting for you guys, I'd hope. Um, so at the Allen Fair Orbis Foundation and the fellowship program, it really is an opportunity to build a better life for yourself, for your family, and for your community. And the fellowship is really here to give you that support to actually realize those opportunities and one day become that high impact responsible entrepreneur. And with that said, there's another poll here as well, which you guys can go and answer. And this poll also just talks about entrepreneurship. Do you think you have what it takes to become a high impact responsible entrepreneur? So take some time to go into the polls and uh, start interacting with that. And guys, again, please feel free to chat uh, on the chat on the side. So talk to one another. Give me a thumbs up if you think I'm doing a good job uh, because I'm all alone here. So I don't know how I'm doing really. So just give me some encouragement. Make me feel like I'm actually talking to, to, to some people out there. Okay, thanks, Yoni. Thank you. Okay, so now we really go into what the opportunity offers. So if you are fortunate enough to be awarded the fellowship opportunity, we have uh, the entrepreneurial support that comes with the opportunity. And this entrepreneurial support allows you access onto our online campus. This is our online campus, online community, where people get to interact, learn more about entrepreneurship, where all our curriculum is sitting. And that is really where we start developing this entrepreneurial mindset that I've been talking about. The second thing that you get on this program is that mentorship. Mentorship is so important. You need somebody to bounce ideas 
are off. You need somebody to be supporting you on that entrepreneurial journey or even on your career just to make sure that you're on track, you are doing things well, and to make sure that you actually succeed and reach your goals. So when you get to your third year, we assign a mentor to you who is then able to help you on that journey. The third thing that you get from us is you get to be part of this community. So everybody in our community is like-minded. Everybody is very curious. Everybody is always asking questions. Everybody is suggesting that things can be done differently. And from there, again, as I was talking about uh, that intellectual imagination, these are the people that you can start working with, combining ideas with, coming up with new and creative ways of solving problems. So that is a huge benefit of being on the program. And lastly, on the entrepreneurship front, we have these amazing, amazing seminars, which we plan for all of our candidate fellows. And here again, we teach you about entrepreneurship. We have this huge uh, conference, which we have in September, which brings all of our program participants together. Whether you are a scholar, you're still in high school, you're still at university, or you have graduated. All of you come into one room, you get to hear from truly, truly amazing entrepreneurs and really get to learn more about entrepreneurship and what you have to do to develop and grow in your entrepreneurial journey. We will then go on to the academic supports that we get on the program. On the program, you get full tuition. Okay, full tuition. So if you get this program, you don't have to worry about, oh no, where am I getting registration money from? Or um, is my accommodation going to be paid? All of this is already paid for you. And just looking at the climate and what's happening in South Africa at the moment regarding registrations and, and learners going into university, this is truly, truly important. And it's very important for us as an organization to really play our part into making sure that we are also helping uh, to make education accessible to people. So we pay full tuition at one of our 10 partner institutions. We will pay full accommodation, again, whether you're on campus, off campus. So if you're off campus, don't start thinking, hmm, I'm going to go stay in Camps Bay or I'm going to go stay in Clifton. No, it is capped, but I'll get to that later. We will also give you money for books. We'll give you money for meals and tutor allowances. So if you feel as if you are struggling, I know when I go to university, economics 101, you, 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 you. So I would have really, really uh, could have done well with some tutoring support. So if you feel as if you are struggling, you need somebody to really be going deep into the module with you, that is what that tutoring support is for. You also have access to post-grad funding. So once you have completed your degree and you would like to maybe move on to honors or masters, there's also an opportunity to apply for that post-grad funding. And lastly, every single month, we give you a monthly stipend. And the serious um, thing about it is we'll say, you know, it's for your printing or to you, uh, for you to do laundry at university. But also, if you just want to go to the movies, that's what the money is for. So that's for you to enjoy. Okay. So now we'll move on to allowances. So just uh, for you to understand how this financial support actually works. So there are three types of allowances that are available at the foundation. So one is the general allowance, and that's the one that I spoke about at the end, which is just a stipend and that is paid to you every month. So you, owe, you get a general allowance if you are in a catering rest, so that would have meant we've paid the rest and we've paid your food already, and that's what that money is for, just for you to go and have fun. You also then have people who are in self-catering residences. So these are residences that don't give you food every day. So if you're in those kind of residence, then we will give you a bit more than just a general allowance. And that will be for you to buy food and groceries and make sure that you are fed. And then the last uh, allowance that you get is private or off-campus accommodation. These are people who might stay at home or they are in a flat sharing with other people or a commune. And here we give you even more 
than the self-catering residents because we understand that you still have to pay for your accommodation, you have to buy your food, you have to buy electricity and all of those things. So this is where I said it's capped and this is capped according to uh, which university our students uh, attend. The other types of allowances that we have at the foundation, as I said before, the books. So we've got two book companies that we work with, Pimp My Books and Van Skype. So the beauty about it is that these bookshops, they'll already know that Lusanda has made it onto the program. So Lusanda, all you will have to do is just go to the bookshop, take all the prescribed books that you need, and that's it. Okay, and please note that I say prescribed textbooks because we only pay for prescribed textbooks and prescribed materials. Okay, I know some of you might get to university and you're thinking, mm, I'd like that also, or that was recommended, so maybe I should get that. Unfortunately, we do not cover anything that is recommended. We only cover textbooks and materials that have been prescribed for your course. Now that we've actually gone through everything about what the fellowship covers, let's actually get into what are we actually looking for or what do you actually need to do in order to get this opportunity. So for me, this is uh, what we refer to as motivational fit. And this is very, very important for us at the foundation because this speaks to our values, this speaks to our mission, this speaks to our vision of the type of people who are looking for, the type of people who actually buy into that. So we are looking for people, firstly, with the highest potential to become high impact and responsible entrepreneurs. And we rely on our selection tools to actually show us these people with the highest potential. We're looking for people who truly buy into our vision of poverty alleviation in South Africa. People who truly understand what it means to be an Alan Gray Fellow. People who've really thought about it and people who will know the responsibilities that come with it. I think I've lost my slides. Um, Yanni, are you still there? Maybe I can just try and um, wing it, if I can use that word. But um, maybe while she's still loading the slides. So yeah, entrepreneur, uh, motivational fit is very important to us because really these are the people that we know that really buy into our vision at the Allen Gerobus Foundation. If we move on to the academic requirements, okay, there we go. Thank you so much, Yanni. We can move on to the academic requirements, please. So if we move on to the academic requirements, minimum 60% for pure maths at the end of grade 11. Okay, so guys, it really doesn't matter what you get for your first term in grade 12 or for your second term in grade 12. We are really just focusing on that 60% at the end of grade 11. And something which is exciting, it's new for us at the foundation, and we're truly hoping to attract a whole lot more applicants, is we have now introduced maths literacy. So for those learners who have done maths literacy in grade 11 and achieved a minimum of 80% at the end of grade 11, they are also eligible to apply. Above and beyond the maths or the maths literacy requirements, we also then need an average. So these are all of your subjects, divide by six because we are not counting life orientation. And there we are looking for an average of 70%. Okay. Other requirements must be a citizen of South Africa. We do have this fellowship opportunity also open uh, to Namibia, Botswana, and Swaziland, but unfortunately those applicants will have to apply through uh, the Namibian fellowship opportunity. We're also then looking for people who really show that passion and show that potential and belief in the future of South Africa and, and Southern Africa and really want to be part of this opportunity. Again, people who are willing to go and study at one of our 10 partner institutions. And just to mention them quickly, in the Western Cape, you can study at either UCT, UWC, Stellenbosch University. 
in Eastern Cape, it's NMU, which is Nelson Mandela University or Rhodes University. In KZN, you can go to UKZN. In the Free States, it's the University of the Free States. And in Gauteng, it is UP, UJ, and WITS University. So those are the 10 institutions that we partner with in the organization. And you can actually go and study any degree that you feel like studying, excluding these three. We do not support learners going to study medicine, veterinary sciences, and dentistry. Okay, so you could be going to university to study law, to study um, accounting, to study a marine biology degree, whatever it is that you are going to study, it is absolutely fine, excluding those three degrees that we do not support. Thank you, Yanni. So here's the selection process for the Allen Globus Foundation. Don't know how many of you guys have seen the application form, but I urge you to actually go onto our website and start working on that application form. So the process for the fellowship selection is actually very long and it takes the whole year. So we start off, we are still busy with campaigning now, and this is part of campaigning, making sure that you guys know about the applications that are open and actually then helping you through that application process. Once you have done that, we will then take all the applications when the applications close on the 30th of April at five o'clock. And maybe here I should really emphasize that the application form is really long and it will take you some time to complete it. So I urge you to go there and start working on it. Maybe just do one question a day. Uh, maybe on a Saturday, do two questions and really just go back, read your answers, reflect on what you've written, refine, and make sure that you are really giving us your best effort. It's very, very difficult to try and complete that application form the night before. So I urge you to please give yourself some time in completing that form. Once you've completed that form in May, June, we then take time reading those forms and assessing them and actually looking at those competencies that we had spoken about earlier and trying to see if they are really eliciting that behavior from you guys. After that, we then have interviews. So if you are shortlisted from the application assessment stage, you will be invited to an interview. An interview is 60 minutes, so that's an hour long. You're interviewed by two people. It is a really fun process. And maybe Sipo guys will just touch quickly on that and really just getting to know you better. And if you've been shortlisted from the interviews, you are then invited to a three-day selection camp. Spend three days with us, really just uh, doing activities with other uh, students, other applicants, and really just getting to learn from one another. And then in December, we will make the final decisions. Thanks, Yanni. So this is how you can apply for our opportunity. So you can visit our website, which is www.allencrayobers.org. There you can complete an online application form, or you can opt to download the form, fill it in by hand, and send it back to us. So when you are sending the application form back to us, unfortunately, we are not back at the office yet. We are still working from home. So you can't come to our Joburg or Cape Town office to drop off the application form. But we have made it easier for you guys. We have a free post number where you guys just need to buy an envelope, put that application form in there, just write that free post um, code on, on in the front and our address and just go drop it off at the post box and we will pay for that form to come back to us. So unfortunately, those are the only two ways that you are really able to apply for this opportunity. We do not accept emailed application forms. Um, so yeah, online or really just by hand and send it back to us. And with COVID, we really, really encourage all of you guys to at least try to complete the application form online. Again, I'll emphasize, please give yourselves enough time to complete that form. Thanks, Johnny. 
So now that we know about the opportunity, we know how to get the opportunity, we know what the opportunity covers, let's have a look at some stories uh, which will then show you guys whether is this opportunity really legit or what our people are doing after they've graduated or completed this opportunity with us. So just some success stories. One of our, our candidate fellows, Dennis Love, is now working with the Senegalese government on the smart cities. And this is something that we are really, really, really proud of. Uh, we've got 55 candidate fellows. So these are people who are still at universities who have already begun that entrepreneurial journey. So they're already working on their businesses in our IVC program, which is ideation, validation, and creation. And through that funding partner that I spoke of earlier, E Squared, they have been able to access funding of up to 1.5 million. So if you are sitting out there and you actually start uh, thinking about starting a business, you will know how important it is to actually get that seed funding to help you to start that business. And our other candidate fellow, Ketiwe, has also, during lockdown, started this toolkit for people who have been uh, affected by GBV. And uh, from then till now, she's been able to raise 18,000 when she puts together these care packages to really help those people in need. And this is something that we are truly, truly proud of because it really just talked to that spirit of significance, which I've been talking about. And then also, we are proud to say we've got 396 uh, career mentors and industry professionals and business professionals who are working with our candidate fellows and making sure that they are doing okay on the entrepreneurial journey and also on track to actually uh, succeed in their careers. Uh, the highlights, these highlights are from the association. So these are people who have completed the program and now sitting in that alumni association where they'll actually sit for life. So you've got 513 of them sitting there, 168 of them are working with entrepreneurship and 85 of them are full-time entrepreneurs. So they wake up and that is what they do. That is their work, that is their nine to five. And we're absolutely proud of two of our businesses who have actually um, achieved a goal of uh, having their businesses valued at over a billion rand. So that is something which is truly spectacular and truly uh, we are proud of them because when we started, Back in 2005, we had set these goals that we would like to have a candidate fellow or fellow run business valued at over a billion in 2030. And we actually reached this goal in 2018. So which means that, you know, our program is really, really helping our candidates to really just start on that entrepreneurial journey much earlier than their peers. And through the support that they get from the foundation, they are then able to grow their businesses to these huge businesses that we see today. And most importantly, they are creating that employment that I spoke about earlier. So some of the businesses that we yes, one. Um, Stitcher, I just wanted to let you know we don't have Sipukazi on the line yet. Um, okay. I think she's having some technical difficulties, so I'm just giving you a heads up when we get there. Okay, sure. Maybe I'll just go to the questions after that and we will keep trying. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, okay, thanks, Yanni. Oh, that sucks. Sorry about that, guys. So uh, these are some of the uh, businesses that are part of our program already. So these businesses belong to our candidate fellows and fellows. And I'm sure you'll recognize some of the brands that are on there. But if I could just tell you about a few of them, for example, Gaelo, the Black uh, Beauty. This was started by uh, Meshach. Meshach studied at UCT. He did, um, did the CA stream, went on qualified as a chartered accountant, had a kid uh, after he got married, had a kid. And one day he was actually going to buy a doll for his daughter and realized that, you know what, there is no doll in the shop that looks like her daughter. He quits his job and that's what he started. That is how Gaelo Black Beauty was formed. And really, you know, in entrepreneurship, and if you can remember to the 14 competencies that I spoke about earlier, one of them is about opportunity recognition. 
and seeing where there's a gap and seeing how you can fill that gap. And that is how that started. Go One, Melvin's business, also doing very well internationally. Yoko, which I'm sure you've seen when you are paying for something at the market or in the supermarkets, really making it easier for, for people to pay. Kula, which is an app which brings together small farmers to be able to uh, pull together their resources and their produce to be able to supply for big supermarkets, which means they are cutting out the middleman. And master spelling bee, this belongs to Katie, who goes all over South Africa, you know, just doing these spelling bee competitions with high school learners, something which is really, really fun and engaging for uh, high school learners. Lemon Lifestyle, which belongs to Lenovo. Uh, so Lenovo's business is all about making us look good, uh, teaching us how to dress better. So he's a personal shopper. For, for people. So these are just some of the businesses that we are really proud of. So it's not only the businesses that are, are, are really making or valued at over a billion, but all of our businesses and all of our entrepreneurs, uh, no matter how small or how big they are, we are truly, truly proud of them. Because at the end of the day, if you think about the vision of the organization, which is an entrepreneurial, equitable South Africa, flourishing with meaningful employment, you guys, our candidate fellows, our fellows, and you guys who are applying for our opportunity, you are the people who will be able to create those um, job opportunities that we desperately need in our economy. So the next slide, I think from here I was then meant to introduce Sipogazi, but unfortunately uh, we do not have Sipogazi yet. So whilst Yanni is still trying to get hold of her, I will now jump on to the Q&A just to uh, take some of your questions and um, let's see. So with regards to the reference letter, how does one go about submitting it? It was not asked for during the application process. Um, so this question got five votes and the response to this question is that we actually do not need um, the, the reference letter anymore. So we truly, truly just uh, want you to take your time in applying for the opportunity. And uh, yeah, we don't need that reference letter from your school anymore. Okay, one of the questions here, which got 12 votes is, how many people get awarded the fellowship each year? And the response to that is uh, 150. So each year our board will give us a target uh, or a number and say you can make offers to 150 people. But it's very important to note that if we have uh, quite a lot of people that we uh, see have met our benchmarks and have done really well on the entrepreneurship front, and we maybe would like to make an offer to them, we will go over the 150. So sometimes we've gone over to like 156, 152. So it really does depend. But also on the flip side, if we feel as if our pool for that year is not that strong, we will not make 150 offers. So the 150 offers is a benchmark that we really work and strive to get to by supporting you guys and making sure that as many people get exposed to this opportunity as possible. But uh, yeah, we sometimes don't make to the 450 offers. Okay, the next question that we have on here is, how long after applications are received will we know whether or not we've been accepted? So I did take you guys through that slide where I went through um, the process, which is the application form, which you guys do. Then we have to do the assessment. After that, if you've been shortlisted from there, you then have to do uh, interviews. After that, if you've been shortlisted, you will then have to go to selection camp and then only we will make a final offer. So you are really looking at this process, really taking the whole year and only finding out if you've been successful or not close to the end of the year. So we usually say in that second week of December, you will know if you've been successful or not. 
Third question is, uh, there's a banking detail tab next to my information on my status of my application. Do I need to fill it in and with whose details? So please don't worry about this yet because first it's important to know that we will never ask you for money when you are applying for the opportunity, okay? And we will only really need your banking details once you have been made that offer and now we have to start paying your allowances to you. So for now, please just ignore that and don't uh, complete that. Okay, the next question also has four votes. Uh, do you have to be a prefect to get uh, this fellowship? No, you do not need to be a prefect. Okay, um, leadership is one of the 14 competencies that I spoke about earlier, uh, but you do not need to be a prefect. Uh, I mean, leadership can come in many different ways. Being a prefect, that's positional leadership. You've been put into that, uh, into that role to lead, but you do not need to have a role to be a leader. Okay, don't know if that makes sense, but think of it that way, that you do not need to have a role or a title to be a leader. So if you can be a leader in your home, you can be a leader in your sports team, you can be a leader uh, amongst your friends, just as long as you are able to demonstrate to us in your application form or in your interview where you have been able to demonstrate leadership um, role with, with a role or without a, with, with a title or without a title, that is leadership for us. And through that, we'll be able to assess that competency. So thank you so much, Richard, for, um, sorry, that wasn't Richard, that was somebody else. Okay, question from Richard. Will you still be considered if you took a gap year? Yes, you will be. So people who are currently on a gap year, and I saw in the chat earlier, before we started, there was another question around um, the gap year. So people who are currently on gap year, they have to apply now with the grade 12 learners. Again, if you're on a gap year or you did take a gap year, you have to apply using your grade 11 results. Okay, so if you have 60% in pure maths or 70% in, oh, sorry, or 80% in maths literacy, 70% overall, you need to apply using those results uh, for now. And then obviously we'll ask for the final metric results, but only at the end. So if you're taking a gap year this year, please apply for the fellowship opportunity now using your grade 11 results. Okay. Another question with nine votes. Uh, what makes an application stand out in order to be shortlisted? Hmm, this is a beautiful question. I don't know if uh, maybe uh, I should be answering this question now or, or, or just telling you about the next webinar that we are going to be hosting. And that webinar will be really just unpacking all the questions. So we're really going into detail all the questions and what we are we, we are looking for. But just high level, what I can say uh, about what makes an application form stands out is that, um, you know, really just answering those questions fully uh, that is the most important thing. You will see that when you're reading our questions, um, they are actually very long and they've got bullet points under them. So when we are assessing or looking at those application forms, we really want to make sure that all of those bullets have been answered. So that is what we are really, really looking for. So we read all of your answers and we assess all of them. So please make sure that you have really taken the time to really answer the questions fully. But also please uh, join the webinar on the 8th of April. We will really be taking you through the application form. And the next question, do you have a particular or ideal candidate you are looking for? Potential, 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 potential. Okay, that is what we're looking for. We are looking for the people who demonstrate the highest potential to become high impact and responsible entrepreneurs. And as I said earlier, it's through our tools that we are able to see uh, who are those people with the highest potential. So that, that is what we are looking for. 
And that is why I even say, as you're sitting here and maybe um, you might be thinking about your other friends or you might think, mm, no, I won't tell so-and-so because they're naughty and they might give our school a bad name or, you know, those type of things. I just think that everybody who meets those minimum requirements should go for this opportunity, should apply for it, because you don't know what potential is actually sitting there. And so we can be able to develop and cultivate that potential. So that is what we're looking for, just potential. Thank you for that question. Uh, the next question, does the fellowship assist you in finding job opportunities once done studying? Okay. Unfortunately not, we do not uh, do that. And the beauty as well about the fellowship and what makes it different from any other bursaries that you might get from any other companies out there is that also we do not have a work back clause, okay? So once you've graduated from our program, there is no way where it says you must now come and work for Ellen Gray or work for the foundation or work for any of our other entities, no. Uh, we are just purely there to support you on that entrepreneurial and academic journey. So unfortunately, we do not help our candidate fellows or fellows uh, to look for uh, employment opportunities, at least not formally. Oh, wow. Yanni, do we have supervising? Uh, unfortunately not, yes, I was just popping in to uh, remind you about uh, fellow in residence in the EA program. Yes. Yeah, okay, thanks Yanni. Okay, so whilst we do not uh, help our, our entrepreneurs or our, our students to actually find work opportunities, we also then have what is called a fellow in residence, which actually then allows all of our, well, not all of them, but they can apply for it, for those who are sitting in the association to come back and work in the, in the organization. And that's usually just for our contracts, of a year. So they are working in the association and making sure that everybody in there is still engaging and also then helping us in the foundation as well to make sure that we are continuously finding other people like them and that the program is growing. Otherwise, if any of them um, want to come back and help volunteer at the foundation or be part of the selection process, whether they want to do interviews or selection camp or any of those things, they are always more than welcome to come and be part of, of finding the next generation of high impact and responsible entrepreneurs. Next question. So, uh, okay, I'll answer that one. Do you need to list three different universities when you're applying for the fellowship? Uh, yes, so application form does ask that you do list uh, three different universities when you're applying. And that's really just to give us an idea of where you are most likely to attend university. But uh, you don't have to attend that university at the end of the day. So when the final offers have been made, that's when we really need to know which university you'll be attending because those are the universities um, that we'll then need to interact with and let them know that Sepogazi is coming to UCT or she's coming to UFS and then we can get um, the, the partnership rolling for the year. Okay, uh, next question with five votes. Um, do our marks influence the possibility of being selected or we just need to get marks above the requirements? Hmm, that's a good question. So results, we do look at results, but this is only at the beginning stage, okay? So for example, you need to be eligible to apply for the fellowship opportunity. So eligibility is 60% pure maths or 80% maths literacy, average 70% excluding life orientation. So at that beginning stage, we are looking at your results. So that is when we truly, truly, truly look at your results closely. And also we do have a weighting on the results when we consider the results and your score for the application form assessment moving on to the next stage. So that's why it is absolutely important that you truly give us your best on the application form in the interview and at selection camp because that is weighted much more than it than the results are okay thanks Yanni, for that one okay next question 
do you only support local universities? Okay, good question. No, not only local universities. We also work with uh, some international universities. So here we do uh, work with Ivy League universities. We've got candidate fellows at Harvard, at Cornell, at Yale, at um, Penn State University. So all over America, really. So we do have a relationship with them as well. And we do actually encourage our candidate fellows, if they have those opportunities, to go and study there. But it is very important that if you are going to go to an international university to understand the funding model, because then it differs for those learners who want to go and study overseas. For example, if you are studying overseas, so most students who really get into those Yales and the Harvards and the Oxfords uh, and um, the Stanfords of this world, they're already getting in there and have a scholarship of some sort. So then we will look at that and how much they're already getting from Yale and uh, we will also then come in and top up. But also that is capped. So if you are interested in going to study overseas, then please just get into in touch with us. Uh, Yanni, if you could please just drop my email in the, in the chat uh, and then I can be able to give you more information about it. So um, as you might know that universities in the States only start the second half of the year. So, you know, we need to then preparing you what you need to be doing for the first half of the year for you to be able to meet the requirements to then go and study overseas for the second half. But yes, we do partner with those universities. The beauty again is that in that funding that we give you, if you do study overseas, is a plane ticket to come back to South Africa for that big conference that I spoke about earlier, January, that brings all of our program participants into one room. Okay, let's have some water, please. So I didn't think I'll be talking this long. But uh, next question, thank you so much for all the questions, by the way, I am loving them. Um, how many people will be shortlisted for interviews? So this depends. Again, we work on a ratio and uh, it really depends on how many people applied, how many people were assessed, and, and then we will shortlist from there. So we work on, on, on ratios. So for example, we've always worked on, on a 50%. So when we move from um, assessment to interviews, we'll interview about 50% of that. And from those who've been interviewed, we'd, in, we'd take 50% to selection camp, which will then give us uh, the final number of the people that will make the offers to. So it really depends on the year and what are the numbers uh, of the people who applied. And also it depends on that target that has been given to us by the board of how many offers we can ultimately make at the end of the year. Okay. Does the fellowship support students who wish to work while studying? Okay, wish to work while studying. I'm here, I'm presuming that you mean probably working like as a waiter or maybe during the holidays, you want to do some shadowing just to get more experience around your role. And Yanni, please jump in here as well if you wish. Um, so yes, we actually encourage all of this. We encourage as much experience as possible. And really, if you look at um, Mr. Gray's own journey and how he actually started Alan Gray, uh, the investment firm, is that he studied at Salbo, he uh, went to Salbon College, went to Rhodes, went to Harvard, worked for a little bit, came back to South Africa, then started Alan Gray, was found, uh, sorry, then started Alan Gray. And he's always said that, you know, it's through working that he was able to also pick up where there was a gap in South Africa in terms of investments, and he was able to come back and start that. So the more you work, the more you expose yourself to different environments, and the more you are able to actually find more gaps and more opportunities, which you can then come up with solutions for. So yes, we will actually do support that, but also remember that um, we are also supporting you on the academic front and to make sure that you succeed at university. Yes, Yanni. You said it all, Seek. I was just reminding you about the academic uh, minimum requirements that we need to, to uphold. Yes. Okay. 
Cool, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's the most important thing that when you are in the program, you, once you make it on the program, it doesn't mean that you have it for life, guys. Like, uh, whilst you are still a candidate fellow, so whilst you are still at university, it is absolutely important that you actually maintain and keep the fellowship opportunity. And there are P points and E points and all of those things that you'll have to, 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 to uphold. So you need to be maintaining a certain academic requirement. So if you feel as if the working is not interfering with that, then maybe then you will need to assess and between you and your program officer, uh, the person that will be assigned to you, those are the kind of conversations then you will need to be having around, should you be working? Is it taking you away from what you should be doing as a university student, which is study and pass? Cool. Okay, next question. Are grade 12 results from term one to term three also required? Uh, nope, we do not require those. And once you've applied for the fellowship opportunity uh, with your grade 11 results, that's fine. There is no need for you to send us your first term, your second term, and your third term reports. No, please don't do that. When we need results again, we will ask you, and that will be at the end of your matric when you have your final matric results. Those are the only other results that we will ask for. So first, second, and third term, please do not stress about that. Okay. And uh, do you need to be an entrepreneur to apply? That's a very good question. Thank you so much for that question. No, you do not need to be an entrepreneur. Remember I said potential, potential, potential. So that is what we're looking for. That is what we want to cultivate. So you don't need to be an entrepreneur. You don't need even to have an idea. Uh, about a business one day, but we truly believe that just by being on our program, we'll be able to cultivate that entrepreneurial mindset. So if, if you meet the minimum requirements, just go for it. Just apply for the opportunity and let the selection tools show us um, for our program if you have the potential that we are looking for or not. Okay, thank you for that question. That's a very good one. Okay, on the application and ask for leadership position. However, if we were given these positions this year, we have only done two months before applications close. Do these positions still count? Yes, they do. So if you have a leadership position, please put it on there because we want to know about it. So uh, whether you've done this for two weeks or one week, it really doesn't matter. Put it on there. Same thing that goes for, um, for the for the community service. If you've done um, a soup kitchen for a few hours, put it on there because that's you doing something for the community, that is you giving back. We want to know about it. If you volunteer at the SPCA or at an old age home once a week, we want to know about that. So put it on there. So nothing is too small or too big for us. Just put it on there and then we will um, have a look at it. Important though, please do not send us certificates proving that you have done something. So please don't send us certificates proving that you're part of the church choir or a certificate that you were indeed a prefect. Whatever you put on that application, we actually believe it. So um, yeah, there is no need to send us all of that information. Okay, moving on to the next question. I didn't get 80% in maths literacy but have uh, distinctions in my other subjects. Can I still get the bursary? That question moved. Can I still get the bursary? Okay. Unfortunately not, uh, because our requirement is, is that. We need that 80% in maths literacy. So again, this goes back to that academic requirements that I spoke about. So if you do not have that 80% in maths literacy, unfortunately, then you are unable to apply this year. But what I can say to encourage you is that the opportunity is also available to students when you are a first year university student. So once you get to university, you will then have the opportunity to apply for the fellowship again as a first year student. So um, this is not the end, you can try again next year when you're at university. Just as long as you're at one of our partner universities studying a degree 
that we support. Okay, Yanni, how many more questions do I still have? I am aware of the time, so maybe I will take the next three. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you still have a, quite a few. Uh, we have three more questions voted with four and with three, and then the rest are twos and ones. So maybe we can take those last three, and then you can spend a few minutes just responding to them by text when we're done. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, thanks, Yanni. So I will respond to the uh, next three questions. Uh, next three, not three. Uh, next three questions, and then the rest I will just go... Uh, on after this and just comment uh, on the questions there for you. Or oh, otherwise you can just email me and I'll be happy to, to respond to you again or even uh, call you to talk to you more about whatever question it is that you might have. Okay, so what happens if I did not meet the requirements uh, for maths, uh, but interested in the program? I think this just really speaks to the other uh, maths requirement prob uh, uh, question that I've just addressed earlier. Okay. In case of an unsuccessful applicant, do you guys refer the unsuccessful applicant to other funding organizations? Yes. So on our application form, there is a section there which asks you to give us permission to share your information with other uh, bursary providers. We've had quite a lot of bursary providers approaching us asking if uh, maybe there are students that we did not make offers to, can we give them that list? So yeah, that is why it's important that you tick yes there, so we will be able to share your information with other people. This doesn't happen every year, and we can't guarantee you that if we don't make an offer, then somebody else will. But if the opportunity comes for us to be able to share your information and make sure that um, somebody else could give you the op opportunity uh, for funding, we will definitely do that. Okay. Okay, this is the last question. In terms of the questions about leadership and application form, should we list all leadership positions held to date or just in high school? Recency, recency, recency. That is what I'll preach. So recency means always give us the most recent information as possible. Okay, so by that I mean if you have been amazing, I know that all of you guys have been amazing since uh, grade five or grade one, some of you, but for this purpose, I think under leadership and under uh, community, it only gives you three spaces or four spaces, so please just give us four. So if you were, let's just say, uh, if you are a head boy now and in grade eight you are a class monitor, there really is no need for you to tell us about you being a class monitor in grade eight. Just put that one thing that you are now a head boy or and that you are now a leader in your church group or you are now a captain of your, of your hockey team or netball team, whatever it is that it is. Okay. So yeah, sorry, I mean, just one more question. I think this is maybe something just to clear up. Um, Sifu Sukukle um, is asking if the foundation applies on behalf of the candidates, candidates to university. Maybe we just want to clear that one up. Okay. Fizu uh, Kukle, no, the foundation does not apply to the university on your behalf. So you are in charge of that whole process. Okay. So that is why I said at the end of the year, if you have been awarded the fellowship, all we will be doing is just asking you, which university have you been accepted to? Which university are you attending? And that's all we do. So we do not apply to the university for you. And that's why I even gave my email address there, because for those of you who also want to go study overseas, we do not apply for you at those universities. We don't get involved in your exams that you need to write. We don't get involved in any of those processes. Or the only time we need to know the university that you're going to is at the end of the year, once we finalize our offers and we need to know who we are paying. Okay, so if there's a will there, please apply to university now. So whichever university it is that you are interested in attending, uh, next year, please, you need to apply to that university. You need to ensure that you get into that university so that we can then be able to support you whilst the students at that university. Okay. But otherwise, if there are no further que 
Uh, yeah, so all the other questions, I'll go in and respond. So uh, thank you so much to everyone. I'm really, really sorry that we were not able to hear from Sipogazi today. So maybe when you guys join again for the second webinar, which I said will be on the 8th of April, uh, then maybe we can have Sipogazi coming on just to tell us more about her experience applying for the fellowship opportunity and, um, and then what the opportunity has meant to her and being uh, on the program. So as I said, our webinar on the 8th of April and they will really be going through that application form. Question one, this is what we're looking for. This is how you answer it. Question two, all the way till the end. So please join us then. But for now, thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank you to those who are on Crowdcast. Thank you to those who are watching on Facebook. And thank you to those who will come on later to watch again. And uh, to Yanni, thank you for the support. And thank you to Sifogazi for your willingness to actually come on tonight and share uh, your pulse of wisdom with our prospective candidate fellows. Thank you so much, guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening and good luck with that application process.